Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Gems of Knowledge. So I'm here with another video on introduction to Euclid's geometry in that exercise 2.1. So today we are going to deal with this exercise that is exercise 2.1. So without wasting our time, let's quickly start with the video. So before that, you know the drill, get subscribed to my channel and also click on the bell button to get the notification as soon as I post my new videos. So here the first question is, which of the following statements are true and which are false? So, give reasons for your answers. So, here the first one is given as only one line can pass through a single point. So, it is said that only one line can pass through single point. So, here you can see one point is given and you can see I am passing one line from here. So, can I pass only one line through this? No. I can pass multiple lines out of this single point okay so we can say that it is false because there are infinite numbers of line passing through the single point so from a single point we can pass infinite number of lines okay so the second one there are an infinite number of lines which passes through the two distinct points okay so there are two distinct points let me show you here this are two distinct points okay these two points are at different distance here so can i pass infinite number of lines through these two points no just you can see i can pass only one line through this two points so we can say that this is also false because only one line can pass through this two distinct points so the third one, a terminated line can be produced indefinitely on both the sides. Okay, so this is the line. Okay, and a terminated line means this can be produced to some extent. Okay, so the infinite extent, whatever extent I want, I can produce it from both the sides. I can produce it from both the sides. So I can say that yes, a terminated line can be produced indefinitely on both the sides. So in both the sides i can produce it so this is true because of the postulate 2 this is the statement is nothing but the postulate 2 statement of this postulate 2 okay next if two circles are equal then their radii are equal okay okay just let me draw two circles over here okay these are the two circles let me tell you if this two circles are equal okay if this circle is of two centimeter and even this circle is of two centimeter then you can say that both the circles are of equal length if they are having the same centimeters okay they are of the same length if two circles are equal, then we can say that the radius of this circle is also equal. So, you can also write it. It is true because of the Euclid's axiom 1. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. Automatically, you can see if two things are equal to one another, then their lengths will also be equal. Okay. Then the fifth one in figure 2.9. So, this is the figure 2.9 you can see this is the figure 2.9 if a b is equals to pq if this a b is equal to this pq and this pq is equal to this x y then we have to show that this a b is equal to this x y okay so you can see this a b is equal to this x y they have already told us this if this a b is equal to this pq suppose let me give you an example if this is of 2 centimeter then this AB is equal to this PQ. This is also of 2 cm. Okay. Then again in the second statement they have told us that PQ is equal to XY. So this PQ if this is of 2 cm then definitely this will also be 2 cm. Then easily we can write this AB is equal to this XY because this is also 2 cm and even this is also 2 cm. So directly we can write this. This is true because of Euclid's axiom 1. Things which are equal to the same thing. If this is equal to the same thing, then things are equal to one another. Means this is equal to one another. If you are unaware of Euclid's axioms and Euclid's postulate, then a video regarding this is already uploaded in the section of YouTube shots. You can go there and you can watch it. Then you can later come back here to understand all these things. Okay. So next question you can see here give definition for each of the following terms okay so you need to define each of the following terms 
are there other terms that need to be defined first they are asking us instead of defining all these things whether we need to define any other terms okay so what are those terms which we need to define and how you might define these terms using those terms okay so we have to say you can see for defining parallel lines perpendicular lines line segment radius of a circle and square we need few things to define it first okay so you can write yes we need to know the terms like point angle plane circle then you should know what is quadrilateral what is angle what are uh, uh, sides everything you should know about all these things then only we can define all these things so let us quickly define all this parallel lines perpendicular lines line segment radius of a circle and square so you can see here the first one is parallel lines the lines which are at equal distance from each other so you know what are parallel lines okay two lines are parallel to each other it means they are at equal distance from each other okay the distance will be equal and also this parallel lines do not meet each other at any point okay and they do not meet or cross each other and they are called as parallel lines okay so if two lines they are at equal distance and they do not meet each other at any point then they are called as parallel lines okay similarly you can see the perpendicular lines the lines which cross each other okay so these are two perpendicular lines okay these are two different lines suppose let me uh, tell you this is ab and this is cd these are the two different lines which are exactly which cross each other exactly at 90 degree from every four points okay so this is 90 degree this is 90 degree here also here also so everywhere it is 90 degree means they cross each other exactly at 90 degree then they are called as perpendicular lines okay similarly line segment the part of the line line segment is nothing but a part of a line which has length okay this is a part of a line this is ab this is line segment if it has some length and two end points these are its end point a and b are its end point and it ha it has it you can see here it is also having some length so this type of uh, line is called as line segment okay next comes radius of a circle so you all know what is the radius of a circle if this is your radius this is your center point sorry if this is your radius this is the center point so you can say the distance from center of the circle to any point on the circumference circumference is nothing but the outside part perimeter you can say no that is called as instead of perimeter we are calling it as circumference of the circle so the point so the distance the line which is joining your center and the circumference any part okay any point on your circumference that is called as radius of the circle okay next comes square a figure which has four equal angles you know what is square okay this is your square the figure which is having four equal angles means every angle will be equal to 90 degree and four equal sides is called as square so you can see also the sides of the uh, square will be similar and also the angles will be of all the four angles will be of 90 degree okay so i hope the two questions are clear to you if you are having any doubts regarding this you can comment me down below okay so the next questions will be continued into my next video so i'll be back soon with that video itself so till then stay tuned and stay connected thank you